Ready when you are, Tony. Hey, everybody. It's Friday, October 2nd. I'm Gay Ann, host and producer of Between the Sheets podcast. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, we'll talk about the shit storm that happened last week. It started with the debate, um, and then it ended with um, Trump and his wife having COVID. Um, but by the way, Biden tested negative. So as that was going to be any surprise, vote blue, vote blue, vote blue. We'll talk about my conspiracy theories, because I know where I've all been seeing, everyone's been talking about it online. Um, but we uh, are here. Follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat, and please like our Between the Sheets Facebook page. Between the Shoots podcast, it's so original. Um, anyway, we've got a different bunch of ladies here tonight. Um, we'll start with the regulars and then we'll bring on the others. Um, Cara Noble, how are you, my love? How are you been? Good, I've been really good. I've been doing a lot of work at home in the garage and in the garden. I've replanted all my tomatoes. Everything looks lovely out there. All good. Come and swim in the pool. I, I will, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday, I will be there. Thank you very much. It's going to be, I think, hot as hell again. Yes. Um, then we have Mara Shane. Hi. That's How's all everybody you, doing? That's all you have to say is hi. Hi. <laughs> did you hear Trump's in the hospital? Oh, he is? That I did not hear. Yes. I'm so sorry. Um, Cheryl Murphy <laughs> is in the house. Hey, Anne, it's great to be back. Uh, everybody, it's so great with this new panel of ladies tonight. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. We have uh -oh. Jenny McNulty. Hey, oh, oh, oh what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> I love that. Uh, we're going to get that out of there. Sorry. Um, hi, guys. I am Jenny McNulty, even though I'm looking really weird. Now I'm back. We'll fix all this. Hi guys. Oh, I like you. I love you. Oh, excuse me. I forgot to say hello. And I love the fact, Cara, that you mentioned garden and garage and tomatoes. We are going to have a delightful <laughs> show. I will not stop talking like this. Don't ask me to. I shan't. <laughs> we should all talk British. For we should. Oh my God. Oh, we, so we, know we love tomatoes. It's true. Tomatoes, potatoes, who knows? Um, but hey, cool news. Um, right before Jenny said, texted me, she goes, hey, what are you doing on Monday? Want to be on Pandemic Password? And I'm like, yeah, had to move a CBS call for it because I love that show. So thank you so much, Jenny. It's thank you for doing it. Thanks. I um, won't us all. Yeah, no, no one else will know either. Shh. Um, also, now we have a very good friend of mine. She um, is, oh, the initiator founder of the Hollywood Times. She is, uh, has a beauty with the pen and beauty with the word and it's Valerie Milano is joining us this evening. Ladies, hi viewers. I'm looking forward to a really fun show with my friend Fiona and my friends behind the scenes. So thank you for having me, Gay Ann. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, all right, I'm going to introduce the guest. You know that I hate this part. It's just too much. And it's just as blah, 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 blah. But Fiona, I met Fiona very briefly the first time at a woman on a roll event. Yes, at the at a theater um, at the Gay and Lesbian Center. And a friend of mine said, don't you know Fiona? And that was Dion, Diane Viox. I said, I do not. And she's like, oh, you have to get to know her. You have to get her on your show. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Um, and then obviously <clears throat> I've seen her other times. Um, when I started my Facebook live chats, she started what is now known as her Corona Life Poetry left coast lesbian lunch crying in bed with fiona show um and it is on daily at 1 p.m pacific on her facebook page fiona goodwin um we'll talk about that but then i started watching that and then i was hooked um but prior to that she is an la-based stand-up comedian um she's a high school behavioral specialist on the tv show britain's worst teenager that was pre-covid i'm sure right oh my goodness pre-america <laughs> Pre-America. Mm. Oh my God, you were a missionary in Honduras. Wow. Kissed a girl there in the jungle while wearing a Satan costume. God, there's going to be so much we're going to have to talk about. Um, <laughs> I've indulged in tea and scones in the Cotswolds and tea in Peru. Uh, is that ayahuasca? 
Mm -hmm. Me too. I did that too. Um, she touched <laughs> the kindergartens in Florence. Hmm. Falling in love with an Australian cellist. Oh, and this is big sigh, everybody. Oh. oh. She enjoys cycling in France, eating churros in Erha, fishing in Positano, and drinking Moe Chandon in Hollywood. Are you single? Why? You know, you are describing what I want from my life. You know, this, I, I know this, <laughs> this singer is not spoken for Fiona. Um, if you are wondering which one of these is the real Fiona, the answer is all of them. Um, she is an adventurer, but she also has a very funny show, which I have not seen yet, but so many women have told me about it. And I think I was going, I had tickets and I was going to see it, but then I think COVID happened. So the shows were postponed. And that is a very British lesbian. It's a solo play about saving one's own life. So, you know, plus, you know, you're like a psychologist too, aren't you? Like a brain yeah, yeah. person? A psych uh, psychotherapist. Yeah, so you sort of have like the left brain and the right brain working at the same time. Yeah, mostly right. Some yeah, left. me too. I mean, my brain sometimes works, but I see where you're going. So, yes. um, like, how did you, let's see, I don't even know how to start. What, when you were a child, I mean, yeah. like, what did you want to be what you, like, when you grew up? And how different is that path than where you are now? Right. Um, well, first of all, can I just say, I feel like I'm on the yellow word. You know, yes. <laughs> Can I be what a stunning group of women. You know, I know some of them are straight, which is unfortunate, but you know, <laughs> you know, after time. Anyway, so yes, your question, uh, Gay, was what did I want to be as a child? What, what I wanted to be as a child was a grown up so I could get my own place. That's it, really. That was my goal to get. I out. mean, was your family life not great, or? Um, it was. I, I mean, Mum did her best single mum, traumatized, <laughs> I do this thing where I just go immediate into heavy, heavy. Mum was traumatized by being evacuated during the war and oh. she brought that all to our family. And then father left and, uh, and uh, it was, it was she, was, she was troubled. So yeah, wow. answer the question. Wow, um, second question, which is a little lighter. What's your sign, Fiona? Pisces. Ah, Pisces, a water sign. All right. Well, um, how did you, I mean, you know, you, what you don't understand and, and, and is, is I'm a little kinetic and ADHD, so we go all over the place, um, but so does everybody else on this thing. Mm -hmm. So how did you come up with um, the play, A Very British Lesbian? Well, I was, I impersonated a straight person probably till I was about 48 and um not privately obviously and uh, then when i came out i suddenly realized i was a stand-up comic who knew um <laughs> not everybody knows that even now but never mind um, <laughs> but, so, uh, and then i i did a uh, i started doing spoken i realized i wanted to perform i came out at 48 and suddenly thought oh my goodness i want to perform so i had a show called i did a show called a very british exorcism which was the reenactment of a, a couple of my exorcisms. I say my exorcisms. I mean, I was, you know, it, it, they were exorcisms being done to me to help me to release me from the curse of being a homosexual. Are you kidding? No, that is, was wow. Was that your parents sent you to do that, or did, why no, did no, you do they, that? They didn't know any of this was going on. I was. I went to the church because they were kind to me, and they always were kind to me. The Catholic oh. Church. What's that? It was a, it was, it was a, no, no, fundamentalist, happy clappy. Mm. You know, I can speak they, in tongues. And they told that, told you that, that you, you needed to be exercised and yeah. then you couldn't be a lesbian anymore. Didn't you know that, Cara? Well, no, I didn't know <laughs> that about you. I know it happens. I know it happens because I've seen religious. Yeah. And maybe it could work the other way, Cara. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no. I'm just saying, you're, you're straight, right? <laughs> you might never show. say never. I yeah. agree. We could cast out the spirit of straightness. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I know. I saw you in Provincetown, and I know that you part of your act is your your the nunnery. You going to join yeah. the nunnery? So, yeah. what do you think about that? Is it easier to be the nun than a lesbian? Well, um, they're one and the same thing. Oops, nuns, I <laughs> nuns uh, wear funny clothes and they have outlandish beliefs. They spend a lot of time on their knees. 
It's not that different. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone, if you want to hear, if you want to talk to any of us, especially Fiona, you can call in 323-524-2599. 323-524-2599. Hey, Tony, can you run that number too um, while we're on so I, can, I don't have to keep repeating it if people want to call? Um, you know, again, you know, if you're on, just hold on. We'll get to you. Don't hang up. If you get disconnected, please call back. 323-524-2599. So Val, you had another question. I know you did. I was just curious too, you know, I know that you uh, performed at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival um, and I just want to say I'm volunteering to go help you next time promote, but I want you to talk about a little bit of, of the European, um, you know, your fans and the difference between the Americans and the Europeans. Mm -hmm. You mean the American lesbians or the... the... <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, yes. as a whole, yes. as a whole, um, well, the Americans uh, drive mostly on the right, and the <laughs> Europeans drive on the left, but some of them don't. So anyway, but that's, um, but in terms of audience, uh, the, uh, the British uh, have hysterics when I tell them that on the co at the comedy store in LA, before you go in, am I right, Jenny, there's a sign saying, no heckling. Oh, for goodness sake. Yes. <laughs> So the British think that's hysterically funny. Yeah, <laughs> it is. What is the point of having a comedian who can't heckle? Anyway, so apart from that, the British are, um, they are slower to laugh. Ah. The Americans, I have the advantage of the accent. And if you have this accent, basically you are more intelligent. You, uh, you're just, everything's better with this accent. My life, I'm happier because I have this accent. <laughs> you get a pass here. People laugh at things you say because they're expecting you to be Monty Python or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so for a while, people really thought I was really, really funny. I mean, obviously they found out later that wasn't that funny, but I was quite funny. Still, I'm a little bit funny sometimes, it happens. Um, but uh, but the Brits and the, and the I mean the the people in in Britain in particularly in what's so great about Scotland people come from all over the world. In fact, I have on my poetry uh, left coast lesbian uh, poetry show. Um, I have somebody on the show who was at Edinburgh, the Edinburgh Festival, and apparently Jenny she was they were watching. They're Australians. They're watching with her wife. They were watching the football match and they were trying to get a look at you, <laughs> right? And I was running up and down, like they were really, they basically come from Australia to see you, okay? Oh. All the way to Provincetown. <laughs> and I'm running up and down the pitch and they're getting annoyed with me because I'm blocking the view of you, right? <laughs> so anyway, so a little bit later, I'm actually talking to them. I stepped on this woman's foot twice <laughs> and almost fell into her wife's lap. <laughs> and they were really just like they couldn't believe it. And then, but it was only later on that we found out that they are uh, people that I've met. And they are on the on the poetry show, but they are obsessed with you. Oh. <laughs> well, there are a lot of crazy people out there, Fiona. What can I say? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Hey, guess what? We have our first caller. Ooh. Tony, patch him in. Hello, welcome to Between the Sheets. Um, what's your name? Hello? Hello? There's a party. Come in. Who's calling? Hello? What's your name? Hello? I don't think that's going anywhere. I don't think so either. Let's hang hang up and if they want to call Someone's up. pants calls you, Fiona. Or their <laughs> slacks. Or trousers. Would you call them trousers? Yeah, <laughs> slides, mate. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, Fiona, what part of England are you from? Uh, which like you know, Gay Ann. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we I, hold on. I live there for one I'm year. Kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Good. <laughs> I started in Hertfordshire, Hereford, and no, not really, Hertfordshire. And then we moved to Cambridge. And mm -hmm. then I moved to Warwickshire. And uh, most recently, I lived, I, well, I lived in London. Living on the edge then. Oh, always, always. Difference between um, British lesbians and American lesbians? 
well, apart from the side of the road they drive on, um, <laughs> they are British lesbians. I don't find, I mean, there isn't a lot of glamour in the lesbian community, here, apart from on this show. I mean, look at you. I can't mm -hmm. believe it. But um, they're more, they're more kind of uh, hearty and sort of uh, just, just more British, I suppose. <laughs> they're just like less, uh, they're more, they won't get super dressed up for things. Seriously? See, now I always thought Europeans and obviously, you know, that they would more than the Americans. Right. Well, if they are going out to a really special do, when I, I had some friends come to Hollywood when I was first here, and they arrived wearing their little black dresses, which is the uniform if you're going out for dinner or something, just a little black dress. That's it. Right. High heels. My neighbors thought I was going to a funeral. <laughs> they, they couldn't understand why people. So there's that extreme. If it's a really, you know, if it's a, a gala or a, something like that, yes, the little black dress. What are the gay nightclubs like? Because when I was there, I was there in the 80s. I don't particularly, I mean, I wasn't gay. I mean, right. you know, the club that I hung out with uh, the most and probably the only one was Tramps. So, um, but that was a straight private club. Right. Uh, so I never really got into, I never really went in the mainstream because I was a little bit of a snob back then. Um, so I, I, what, what are like lesbian clubs like in London? I have no idea. <laughs> You've never I went? Called no. the sombrero. Do you I was in, I was, I mean, the straight ladies probably know better. I mean, the car is better than I do. But, he can well, tell you what the convents are like there, though. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know what? After a certain hour, the nuns just bring down a disco ball. Does it really matter? <laughs> I'm proud about the convent, but, you know, but no, I was, I, as I said, I was impersonating a straight person. Right. So I, if I saw a lesbian who, or someone who looked, you know, who maybe had short hair and big boots, I would just, um, you know, I would walk on the other side of the street. Wow. I was that frightened. I mean, not obviously in my 40s, but. Well, how my... old were you? Okay, here, hold on. We have another caller named. Yay. Hold on. Let's see who, what's her name. Hold on. Her name is Patricia Ferrari. Oh, like, let's, she's one of my tribe. Let's say hello. <clears throat> Patricia? Hey. Hi, Hi. Welcome to Between the Sheets. I'm sure you have a question for Fiona. Oh, I don't have a question, Fiona. I am just supporting Fiona because she is so beautiful. Oh. <laughs> oh. I was also I at the uh, um, the Provincetown uh, uh, football game last year, too. I sat behind Susan Aston. Really? And uh, Jenny McNulty was the cutest referee of them all. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but were you fighting to see Jenny McNulty or were you fighting to see me, Patty? <laughs> I was actually looking at the football game, watching all the hot women play football. There you go. There you go. Right for the record, I was actually, I've given up the referee. Karen O'Donnell was the ref because everyone yelled at me too much the past few years. I'm like, shut up. This is fun. They take, they take it very, very seriously. So I was the announcer. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Not, that's I'm awesome. I'm going to say Patty has uh, written some beautiful poems for the poetry show. Oh. And, uh, really oh. Inspired by Fiona's awesome poem. Yeah, my awesome. Hey, Patty, where do you live? Where are you calling from? Um, Pittsfield, Massachusetts. It's the Berkshires. Yes, yes, yes. You're one of my tribe. Are you Italian? Yes. Ah, you're one of my tribe. Welcome. <laughs> 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 well, I you have if you if there's anyone else that wants to talk to Patty or Patty, you have any questions for anybody else, please do. Otherwise, I really appreciate you calling, supporting Fiona, and checking out Between the Sheets. Thank you so much. Have Absolutely. Thank you very much. This is my first podcast call, so this Aww. is a big deal for me, too. Yay. Hey. 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 Kind of a, for us, I was too. kind of scared Cherry. as well, because Fiona said you guys were so smart, and I was like, ooh, should I call in or not? So I was like, ah, I gotta call in. You know what? We're not really I smart. Can't... We've just learned to talk like this. That's what <laughs> <Correct. laughs> it is. Quite frankly, if this is your first podcast, I love that Between the Sheets has broken your cherry. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go to go to Provincetown for Women's Week for all of us because we can't go. So go right up and down yeah. the, the street. Oh, I know, your I know. I think I may. I just may. Yay. Thanks for calling. Thanks okay, for have a good one, guys. Hey, everybody. Bye. Oh, we have another. We have two callers. We're just going to keep getting them. Okay, Tony, coming on next. Hello, K Christy Kirby. Are you on with us? 
Hello, I'm here. Hi, Christy. Welcome hi, to the Sheep. Hi, I just wanted to say uh, hi, Fiona, and thank you for all your heart and the workshops you do for us to help us. And uh, I was curious about your ayahuasca journeys because my son wanted to take me to the beach and drop LSD, and I wanted to know what that was like. Yeah, Ooh, I'm, not not different. Different. I'm not an expert on the LSD. I think you'd have to talk to uh, to Jenny McNulty for that. <laughs> I gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> but, but ayahuasca, um, yeah. I recommend it. Mm. There, it's a more of a guided journey though, right? Isn't it, yeah. Fiona? It's not like just, hey, I'm going to pop some and, you know, put in the Simpsons or anything. Isn't it it's more a of a journey? Yeah, it's a spiritual journey. No, I mean, so just in terms of dropping acid with your son, it might might get weird. Just make yeah, sure someone would... there is like not <laughs> dropping acid. <laughs> that would be my suggestion. I recommend no. division. Ari, you've done ayahuasca, haven't you? I have not done it. No, I mean, I've heard lots of stories, good and bad. So, but it, I'm not going to try it. You know, some things you can't do. I'm never going to go skiing again. <laughs> I'm never going to scuba dive again. I'm never going to do ayahuasca. I may go lesbian. I don't know. <laughs> oh, we should. Yeah. <laughs> Mara, oh, we should. <laughs> Hey, Cheryl, no, have you ever done, I mean, you're spiritual. Have you ever done yeah, that? No, I've never done it. I've heard both good and bad things, but I know that if, like, like Fiona said, if you have a guide, you know, and it's treated as a sacred ceremonial practice, it could really be quite profound. It is. Right? And it, it, Life changing. You, yeah. The, uh, the vomiting kind of separates out the yes. recreational users. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, it was. Christy, are you still on the line? Do you have any other questions, sweetheart? I'm still here, and I just wanted to say uh, Fiona is awesome, and we all love her, and we're part of her tribe, and she does awesome workshops. So go to Fiona at FionaGoodwin.com, and yeah. you'll be coached forever. And her sparkling blue eyes are amazing. And the Aww. trend is blue. Vote blue. Vote blue. Yeah. Thank you, Christy. Aww. Have a good evening. Thanks Thank for calling you, in from Between the Sheets. I'll pay you Absolutely. later. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Hi, we have another Bye. caller. We have Brenda. Brenda, Brenda, Brenda. Are you here, Brenda? Brenda. Hi, Fiona. Ah. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Yeah. I, I just want Fiona to know that the tribe is here for her. Oh. Yes, Fiona. Hi. <laughs> um. Laura's here and Maria and Patty and and so many people are here for you. We love you so much and appreciate all you do for us. Thank you, Bram. And um and you know, I when you started the Corona Poetry Live, my first poem was about my anxiety and my insomnia. I was just going insane with COVID and all the worries. And now we're all in such a good place. I'm in a good place, a, a great personal journey and a spiritual one as well. And thank you for guiding me every day by being such a great role, role model for us all. Oh my Love you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank that you, was, thank you. Brent. Thanks, Brent. That was packed full of, Thank you. Oh, That's all. Of Thank love. Speaking from my heart, Fiona. You're so sweet, my love. Thank you. Thank so you. I need to know what are these workshops, Fiona? Yeah, exactly. I was going to go yeah, there. What do you yeah. do that you have profoundly changed people's lives? Obviously, I've paid them. Don't even. You know, <laughs> no. Um, so I started off with the Corona Live Poetry, and then and then I there was clearly such a response because I guess because of COVID and you know people being where they were in the place they were in. So. I, I said, let's have more intimate groups where I can also flip into the role of psychotherapist and to support people. So that we have um, workshops, I've got two going at the moment, workshops with about nine, nine or 10 people in them. And, and then they do the workshops and then they've decided they wanted to continue. So they keep it. So I just do them like every, it's such a response because I guess because of COVID and you know, people being where they were in the place they were in. So, I, I said, let's have more intimate groups where I can also flip into the role of psychotherapist. I just heard myself I to support people. Something so, weird. It was a really important point. <laughs> I was looking for it. I was looking for it. Who should, I You're a ventriloquist. <laughs> I know. I'm like, what's going on? Okay. So anyway. <laughs> he sounds great. Come yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Whoever she is, she's dateable <laughs> and intelligent. So, so bloody intelligent. Oh, hold on. Um, we have Rosella Gomez on the line. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Rosella. Rosella, are you there? She's Tony, not. Did, Tony, did you go bye bye? Can you? No, I'm here. Oh, how Thank are you? Me. Welcome to Between the Sheets. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is awesome. Would you like to say something to Fiona or any or impart any good words about Fiona? I feel like it's a Fiona roast. I, think so. <laughs> I would love to just say how beautiful Fiona looks and how lovely she is. She is just the most beautiful person and she has the most wonderful soul. Her eyes just beam and shine with so much love and joy. And she's helped so many people. Thank you, Rosella. You're so sweet. Amazing. You're so Thank sweet. you, Rosella. Can I, Rosella, can I tell them a little bit about you? Yes. Absolutely. Okay, so when Rosella first came on um, Corona Life Poetry, Left Coast Lesbian Lunch Crying in Bed with Fiona show, she, um, she'd lost her job because of COVID. She had health issues uh, and she lost her home. So that's how it was for her when she first came on. And um, and so we've been able to support her as a tribe, which is great. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh my yeah. goodness. Thank you, Rosella. Thank you, Rosella. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye, Fiona. Bye, Rosella. See you soon. So Fiona, okay, do, you have, do you have poetry? Do you have like a poem that you could read to us this evening? Sure. Yeah, I could do that. I mean, I'm not a poet, you know. What does it matter? You write. I've heard you. I just came up with an idea to a way of keeping myself sane, and um, that's that's what happened. Um, okay, so I will have to go on my phone. So I write. I have to. I don't do the show, by the way, every day. Now I only do it on a Monday and Friday. Ah, okay. So the workshops. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do it all. So um, I hope you don't all hate me for all these lovely calls that are coming in. Oh, but, they're beautiful. Yeah, thanks. they are. So this was my, t my poem today. It's called Gone Girl. And she's in there somewhere, you know, the voice. She's been gone for a few days now. The first day she was missing, I wasn't that bothered, but everything was running fairly smoothly. And then I noticed a void, a cold space, as if a ghost walked by and took me with her. I went willingly, unconsciously, didn't put up a fight. I really need her back. She's the best part of me. I'll tell her I'm sorry and ask if we could talk. I know she'll be able to explain everything. <laughs> it is a woe. Well. I like it. I'm going to start tuning in. We have Amy on the line. Tony, is Amy still here? Is it Amy? Was it Amy? Uh, I'm still here. Thank you from Amy. Boston. Thank you from Boston. Welcome to Between the Sheets. What um, what praise would you like to give Fiona in the next three seconds? <laughs> well, okay, okay. I guess I'll start by chanting because she likes when we chant for her and it's Fiona, Fiona, Fiona. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, I don't think that's helping. That's not helping the cause. <laughs> that's <laughs> the start <yet? laughs> No. no, I just wanted to say, like, what Fiona's doing for a large number of women, mostly lesbians, we have a couple of male followers, too, is, is really, you know, pushes us forward in a time that could really take us down. So I wanted to just thank her and tell her to keep doing the great work and keep offering the workshops to these wonderful people. Thank you, Amy. Well, thank you, Amy. I appreciate that. Thanks. To, we we everybody does love Fiona. I mean, how what's not to love about Fiona? Oh, lordy, lordy. <laughs> Let's just exactly. make you squirm exactly. even more. Let's make you squirm. Um, you said so, nothing. You said nothing about my pretty blue eyes, though. Um, oh, was I supposed to say yes? Right. You're you're looking so fantastic, my lovely. Your eyes are shining like mm -hmm. the blue of the sky. Thank you. Good. Okay. Yeah, you Lots I'll hold that compliment when I see you face to face again, Fiona. Uh <laughs> Remember that. Remember her, her lovely blue eyes. Oh, I can't forget them. I've seen them. Um, <laughs> well, thank you so much, Amy. I appreciate you tuning Thanks, in Amy. to Between the Sheets. Thank you so much. Thank, um, thank you all. Right. all. Take care. Yeah.
We have another caller, Lauren, and then we'll get to some Q and A's on the show. Um, so everyone listening, let's talk, we want to talk to Fiona, um, but let's get Lauren next and then we'll take a break on calls for a minute. Hi, Lauren, welcome to Between the Sheets. Okay. Okay, um, Lauren, call in and then when you call in later, just turn the volume down to the podcast because we cannot hear you, but thank you. Um, so, Fiona. Yes, I, I can only apologize. No, don't worry about it. What do you think about, um, everyone here saw or sort of part of the debate and if they haven't seen the debate, I'm sure they saw clips of it. Um, Fiona, what do you think? Who's gonna win? Oh, I, I don't really have words to describe what, what we saw. Um, who's going to win? I really don't know. I mean, I know Biden's what, seven points ahead, but yeah. I mean, Trump's capable of putting pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Hence, COVID. <laughs> my opinion, my yeah. opinion. Now, Mara says, Mara said he was in the hospital, right? Yeah. One of the things I'm really happy about is that when it came out about him having COVID, I was so relieved that people didn't, weren't saying, maybe there are people saying good or something like yeah. that. I'm just so grateful that people are being civil because this is an opportunity to demonstrate civility and we have been missing it somewhat. Even Absolutely. Biden's side of the, um, you know, decided not to, did you guys hear this? Decided not to post any um, of negative uh, commercials against him for this time right now. Wow. I couldn't believe that. That's beautiful. Well, I mean, Biden is a gentleman. I mean, he really is a gentleman. Um, I think, you know, even in the way he conducted himself, I mean, think about like the way Trump was just going at him and except for just, I think even when he said, shut up, man, I mean, that's probably all he got, you know what I mean? But that was still, you know, very polite. Mm -hmm. um, I would have walked off the stage, but then I would have been, I'm the hot headed Italian, so it doesn't matter. But I think, I mean, I listened to it and what bothered me is at some point, I couldn't really, I didn't listen to what they were saying because the volume was just so deafening that I just couldn't, it's like I couldn't listen, it was hurting me. And I just hope, I mean, look, <clears throat> I don't hate Trump. I don't want him to suffer any horrible thing. I mean, yes, he has COVID, but I don't want anything horrible, horrible to happen to him. Um, I hope he recovers just like I would anybody wishing that had it, but I do not think he's fit to be president, period. So, you know, vote blue. That's all I'm saying. Just me. <laughs> Are you going to get into your conspiracy theories about this? Oh my I've, seen, I've seen people talking about this, you know, this is a, another tactic for Trump to, uh, you know, to win the election is just, you know, he doesn't really have it or I don't know. Well, the conspiracy theorists are saying that, that, you know, obviously, you know, does he have COVID? Does he really not have COVID? Has he had COVID and just been keeping it quiet? Um, you know, did he give the aid COVID? I mean, uh, the aid COVID. I mean, there's all that. And it's like, and then is, does he have, if it's like, is, does, is it like having COVID now because he doesn't want to, you know, do any more debates right now um, because of whatever reason um, that he, you know, does he, um, what's the other thing that they were saying? The other thing is his tax returns. That's he another thing. That everyone feel sorry for him when he's just yeah. told the entire country that he's a thief and a liar. You know, and then the other thing is that, um, you know, that there is a vaccine of some sort in the works, whether it's true or not. And then no. like suddenly he'll be like recovered from COVID and saying, see, <clears throat> ah. I've been working on the vaccine That's and true. that comes in time. And therefore when that comes in, guess what? It'll be a shoe in to her presidency because of people will think, oh my God, this is the president that has the cure for COVID. So again, this is all conspiracy theory. None of us know. I mean, truly if I was his campaign person being a publicist, I would in, truly invent something that just gets dumped probably the night 
before, like a, maybe like the night before the election that suddenly changes the landscape on COVID. And then, you know, it's a no brainer. Then anybody could run against him. Obama could have ran against him again and he would have lost. So I think they've got something in their side pocket, but we'll see, we'll see. But like I said, I don't wish Trump any any ill any illness to get sick i don't because i think that's bad fucking karma so period can i talk to fiona real quick yeah, absolutely yeah. val politics but i just want to ask her because i know we're going to run out of time and i really want her to talk about her psychotherapy because i have a daughter that's that's come, come out came out when she was in college and she doesn't believe in labeling and i know gay ann has been really touched on this subject quite a bit and with your psychotherapy, and I'm sorry if I'm changing subjects, but I really want to know this personally, mm -hmm. that, you know, what is your opinion of this day and time for these kids growing up, if you want to call them that, and they don't want to be labeled? I mean, she basically said when she came out to me, I, I said, you know, well, are you gay? You know, she was in love with a woman. And she goes, Mom, we don't say that. She says, I can always change. I know you have a real work ethic with, with your kids that you work with. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, I think that uh, this, I think you're absolutely right. This day and age, people don't want labels. Kids don't want labels. Why should they have labels? Why, the reason they don't need labels is because they can be fluid. They can go from one to the other. We couldn't, we couldn't have done that. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't have done that. I mean, I, you I did. I did. Not until like, later though, right? Not till last week. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, so it took me such a long time. But one of the reasons I didn't come out uh, 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 sooner was because I had the conviction that I was, you know, I read a lot of Carl Jung and Carl Rogers, and I had this conviction that if I healed my, my relationship with my mother, that I wouldn't be wouldn't be gay anymore. Mm. So I spent basically forty eight years in therapy, training as a therapist waiting for the moment when I would walk down a street and look at a guy and go, oh my God, it, it didn't happen. And, and, um, and, and then the thought of then going, coming out and then going back in the, going back in the closet or then saying, oh, but I'm not gay really. That would have just been so embarrassing. But now these kids, they don't care. And why should oh, they? Mm -mm. Sorry, I think that there's, um, there, that society and being in this day and age and the millennials, um, I mean, it's, it's wonderful. You can see how much more enlightened that they, ha that they are, but also we've come a long way. I mean, back when you were struggling with what you were struggling, you know, with this whole thing, it wasn't out there. It wasn't, sh it wasn't considered cool. It wasn't acceptable. Um, so I think that, you know, your Val's uh, daughter is, um, lucky in a way that she's a part of this generation that is so much more cool with this. Mm -hmm. It's not just generational though. Yes, that's true, Mara. I completely agree with you. But if you look at different places in the country, it would oh, yes, still be true. an issue to, you know, Definitely. to come out, you, you know, whether you wouldn't want the label just because you wouldn't want to be different. Oh, in God, some places. Yeah. So, right. I agree. So but, that, your daughter's very lucky to have you to, you know, that you're so cool and uh, yes. does, does it does it bother you that she doesn't want a label? No, not at all. I just didn't know how to. I never, you know, I didn't know how to deal with it, and so that was the first thing that I said, mm -hmm. you know. And so I, I'm happy that yeah. that these kids nowadays, and that was just my first experience, and now I'm delving into it, and so I hear other kids saying the same thing, and it's because of the fluidity, and I get that. So yeah. I mean, but that's new now. I mean, but then. Yeah, yeah, but it all really is, I think, whoever brought up, it depends on what part of the country, Jenny, because, I mean, I'm 56, I'm going to be 57, and I grew up in New York, and, you know, in the 80s, and I didn't think, I, wouldn't, I didn't practice, like, I didn't actually go out and sort of explore my lesbianism or gayism. I you were I not a practicing there. lesbian I at was the time. Not a practicing <laughs> lesbian back then. But I knew I was different and I knew I had a crush on girls, but at least like in the scene that I was in, um, and that was like, you know, the club scene in New York, um, there was a fluidity there, you know, and growing yeah. up seeing two men and two women together and and 
and a lot of a group of people together um, enjoying each other. I mean, there was not it was not taboo for me. So I think it made my transition into realizing, you know, this is who I am fundamentally. OK, because I never saw it as anything bad, you know, and even when I came out to my mother, um, you know, I, you know, obviously, I think my mother, that relationship with moms, you know, it was always what did I do? You know, for her, it was what did I do? Well, you named me mm. Gay Ann to start with. How, where <laughs> else was I going to go? Um, yeah. But, you know, hello. But, you know, but it wasn't like, you know, like there are some some really wrenching stories that we've all heard in the community where disassociation, excommunication, yeah. throwing the people out of the house. I mean, my mother wasn't thrilled about it. She thought she was to blame at first. And then right after that, there was a beat. And she goes, so I'll never get grandchildren, will I? Oh, that's because, what my dad said. Because Thank I'm an only you. child. And I'm yeah. like, I'm not sure about that. But, you know, but I think, you know, the whole labeling thing, I'm glad that this generation is moving forward without labels for anything. Forget about sexuality, just about everything. It seems that this generation, even though entitled, um, feels entitled, um, that there is much more acceptance. Um, but maybe it's because things are out in public more where we had to kind of hide to, to some degree. I mean, what do you guys think? I agree. It, that's what I, I didn't come out till really late just because I never saw me. I was, you know, what, yeah. what was in the media was like big, scary women. And like, I wasn't that I wasn't attracted to that. So it kept me in the closet for a really long time until I, you know, saw other, other people and things. I blame the L word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't blame, you credit. You credit the L word, not blame. Yeah, credit. Don't that blame. Normal. And I, normal. Think, I think that people are more willing to be vulnerable these days. They're starting to realize that vulnerability is a strength. It's an asset. And it's okay to, you know, maybe show who you are or to be original, be unique. And everyone's trying to find their own truth, you know? So I do think that we are kind of... Uh, agreeing on this now that it's okay to kind of you know um if you're hurt to show that or if you're different show that or if you're the same and then it turns out that we're all the same av anyway right so i mean if we just keep being vulnerable we'll re really realize that coming together how how much we have in common and how how much we are are all the same mm -hmm. well i think it's really important especially now um you know, I think when I was younger, I was a little bit more of a spitfire than I am now. I know, shocking. Um, but I've calmed down a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, Man. just a little <laughs> tiny bit as I've got, and menopause doesn't help because I'm trying to calm down. And then all of a sudden that rage comes in with menopause, that's a mood swing. So I'm like imbalanced all the time. I keep saying to a friend of mine, I said, I'm sorry, I'm such a bitch, uh, menopause. Um, <laughs> but, but I think, it is so important, like communication and and wearing one's heart on their sleeve mm -hmm. and emotion yeah. and, and just being out there and, and not looking for acceptance. I think our generation, we looked for acceptance from people. We people please just to be accepted. I, whether you're gay or straight, I think that was our generation. I just think now, and even at my age, it's like, I don't care. This is who I am, you know, and accept me or not i'm not changing you know I think the people people pleasing is a gender thing too i think in general you know especially our age you just women feel like they've got to be more you know pleasant and and people pleasing i i think but um what is it like for you guys are you uh karen fiona are you like you fucking whiny ass baby americans is it the same <laughs> there uh, in terms of, of, of the fluidity and the acceptance that, I mean, I don't know how long it's been since you guys have even been back there to, to comment on it, but do you? You go, Cara. Well, a long time. I mean, I, w I was there up, right up until 1999, then I moved here. And of course I visit often, but um, I, it's hard for me to say, because it's on, honestly, it's not my, my world. The only yeah. thing I can comment on is that I have one son and I tell him off all the time because he's not gay. <laughs> well, a nice gay boy son and he's not <laughs> so what i can tell you so I, I i think just like any any country you grow up in the in the countryside um you know i mean you're the only gay in the village 
Uh, and um, so... I don't understand that. <laughs> no, no, no. Little Britain. Did you see Little Britain? The show on TV. Yes. It's an English uh -huh. sitcom. It's an English sitcom. I'm only mm -hmm. the only gay in the village. Anyway. <laughs> What's it called? It's called Little Britain. Oh, it's a show I... called Little Britain. Anyway, so um, so you won't meet another lesbian necessarily living in, in the village. Oh. Somewhere out in the middle of the world, you know. And, uh, but if you lived in London, it'd be very much like more more i think the scene there is probably more active than los angeles i mean los angeles please yeah. tell me why there isn't a lesbian bar i was going to bring that up because i've been told about this and it's just terrible i'm so sorry for you all it's not fair i came why? here expecting the l word and i, I you know there was trader joe's there was the pet <laughs> store, the, uh, yeah i couldn't find it anywhere <laughs> well here's the thing i mean Car, I think it'd be really funny if you did finally get your gay son and he was like a beer drinking, sports watching, puts a hat on so he doesn't have to deal with his hair, kid. You'd be like, what? what? What are you doing? You're supposed to decorate and do my hair. Sorry, mom, game's on. <laughs> oh, wow, that would be very funny. And it, that would not happen. <laughs> Carl will get a great grand, a gay grandchild. So that's what she'll get. Um, we have, oh, oh, we have some callers. Hold on, let me see. Tony said callers. We have callers whenever you want to take them. I want to take them now. Give me the first one, Tony. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Between the Sheets. Hello, thank you. Who's calling? My name is Elizabeth McCain, and I'm one of the Fionians. Fionians. Oh, now there's, a, now there's a whole continent of them. Fionians. Yeah, <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth McCain. How are you? I'm gonna. Can I just say about Elizabeth McCain has an amazing show, and she's written a book, and it's called Tell Me, Elizabeth. A lesbian bell tells. Yeah, so she's from the. A South. lesbian bell tells. So she's got a. Great I'm one of the original lipstick lesbians. Let's bring the word lesbian back, y'all. Oh. <laughs> hey, Valerie's from the South. Yeah. A lesbian bell. Oh. Come on. Bell, like oh. Bell, bell. <laughs> Who is? You yeah. Okay. That what you're saying? Okay, I couldn't catch it. That's great. That sounds interesting. Yes. But what's and your we book love about? Fiona. We love her. My book is about my coming out journey and family estrangement and finding love and belonging and coming out in Washington, D.C. in the 90s. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And Fiona is such an inspiration to all of us. We really enjoy it. And her workshops behind the mask have really helped us bond and have hope. Thank you, Elizabeth. Oh, this is just You're fabulous. welcome. I know this is great. Thank you, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, right? No, no. Yes? Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. Uh, You're Tony's welcome. Thank you. Elizabeth Next please. caller, Tony. You're Next. welcome. We have another, not, another one, Tone. Hello. Welcome to Between the Sheets. Hello, I'm calling from Cootamundra, New South Wales, Australia. I'm one of Fiona's Fionians. No, my name no, is Venerable Ken. Oh my God, this is so sexy. Okay, go ahead. Her name is Venerable Tenzin Savion. She's a Buddhist uh, nun. For real? Oh, cool. And someone just called me sexy, Fiona. Did you hear that? I no. heard that. I'm, I'm, ignore, I'm, I'm, I'm blanking it. Don't worry. I'm blanking it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you a little bit how, how um, you found us, Tenzin? Would you want to say it? You, you to yes, you, yes, please, yes. So, uh, so Tenzin uh, has a, an inoperable cancer. And um, when, uh, when we first met, uh, well, she found, she was, I'm going to go back a bit. She was supposed to be with uh, this uh, April and Deirdre who were coming to see you, Jenny. She was supposed to be at Provincetown with them watching you and instead she decided to carry on she's a big surfer uh, on the sort of the semi-professional circuit and uh, so she decided to stay in Huntington Beach to surf anyway I'm cutting and you, you tell your story Tins and I've talked a lot and I do apologize for that Jenny because I've been hearing for a couple of years how hot you were from my friends Deidre and April and um, but no the surf was more enticing but um, I have a message from April. She's actually in hospital at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, 
The message for Maple is, you still are hot, Jenny, but she thinks Fiona Cotter. I'm sorry. <laughs> but just Agreed. Still... Agreed. And I have another message. That my darling Fiona, I have met you from Brooklyn. She's here, age seven. She said to say that you are the prettiest lady on the panel today. And she loved you. And for all of you, I have, I'm between the sheets as we speak. And I have a couple of lesbians in bed with me. So I'm having my own show over here. Is it one o'clock in the afternoon over there? It's a something like that. I don't know what time it is. I have Tell us, I what is tomorrow time. like? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear that, sorry. I said, tell us what is tomorrow like? What is tomorrow like? It's, it's Saturday. Your yeah, she's funnier too. But oh. um, <laughs> yeah, Jenny, Jenny, she's Australian. Sometimes our humor just doesn't doesn't go over. That I mean, it's Saturday, one o'clock. It's still Friday night here. It's just a little joke about the time yeah, zone. Saturday afternoon in Cootamundra, and it's beautiful <laughs> spring day. And and um, I'm not very well today, so I have my doctor, who's a lesbian, and her partner in bed with me. So. There you go. Yes. I like socialized medicine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's all it's all hands on here. That, and, is, um, that is taking house calls to a whole new level, though. Whole new level. <laughs> it does. It does. Well, thank I don't you have Kenton. time to die. No time to die. None. But, Never um, time to die. But Fiona, we love you, darling. Your beach tribe love you. I love you, and you look amazing. You all look amazing. I'm. I'm a happy old lesbian right now. I could die happy today right now. <laughs> but you're not. So we hope, we wish you well. Um, you know, Thank do you. what you need to do in bed with the healers and then tell us about it. Um, <laughs> and, um, and and be safe, okay? Thank you for calling, Tenzin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tenzin. Namaste. Bye. Namaste. Bye, darling. Namaste. Um, we have Lauren. Lauren is calling back. Hi, Lauren. Are you calling again? Lauren, are you there? Hello. Hi, Lauren. Yes, How are you? I'm not Lauren. I'm Maria. Maria. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, Lauren was calling back. I guess she's gone. So welcome, Maria, to Between the Sheets. How are you? I'm very good, Paisan. Paisan. Oh, you're my, one of my tribe, too? I want to your tribe. I want to Fiona's Fionian tribe as well. Yeah. Well, oh, we're all part of Fionia, Fionia, Fiona's tribe. <laughs> I wish you had a flag. The Fionians. <laughs> is this Maria Concilia? Yes, it is. Fiona, oh. hello. Hi, Maria. Lovely to have you on. Maria's lo very local, just over the hill here. Like what part of the hill? I'm in Chatsworth. Oh, okay. You're on my side of the hill. Oh, nice to hear. <laughs> exactly. So what would, what, um, so what wanted, would you like to tell Fiona that you haven't told her before? That I haven't told her before, except that I am so elated to find this tribe. Just, it's helped me a thousandfold. Wow. And I'm just so grateful wow. in so many ways. Thank you, Maria. Yeah. Thank you, Maria. Yeah. I appreciate you checking between the sheets out. And um, I hope you and all the Fionians continue to watch. And if I have to get Fiona, Fiona back to have all of you watch, that'd be wonderful because she's always, always a pleasure. <laughs> it's not time to go yet, by the way. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, thank you, Maria, for calling you, Maria. in. I think Lauren, Tony is saying Lauren is calling back. We'll try Lauren again. Lauren, is this you? Lauren, Lauren, Lauren. Okay, Lauren's gone. She just got sick again. Screw that. All right, five times a charm, Lauren. Five times is a charm. So tell me, Fiona. Yeah. Um. So, uh, tell us what. Let's see. What do you think if you had to? And and we don't. I don't listen to the show all the time. Um. You know what is the biggest message? that you have sort of like your general mantra or your general message that you have for your show uh <clears throat> i've got lovely hair <laughs> <laughs> i think uh, the general message well 
the workshops I do are called Behind the Mask. Yeah. And uh, the uh, and they're sort of COVID designed. And uh, I, can I just tell you how it started? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. So how it started was I was sat in my apartment thinking, what the, what am I going to do? And and I'd been watching Tyler um, Tyler Henry on you know his Hollywood show, the Hollywood Medium, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, and I and I thought I've got to do something. I've got to stop thinking about myself so much. I've got to try and do something, be of service, something. So I I, I thought I'll do what Tyler Henry does and to conjure up dead people, he um, he scribbles on a piece of paper. I didn't. I wasn't hoping that dead people would come. Obviously, I was. That's not my area. But um, I was scribbling. I well, thought, you don't oh, need the dead when you have all these alive fans. You're doing good. <laughs> so I scribbled and scribbled. And I thought I'll scribble and see what happens when I do the scribbling, right? When mm -hmm. I scribble. And I scribbled and I thought, oh, I think I've got a little bit of a, I'll start writing. And anyway, oh. the writing turned into a poem. And then, and, and it was just basically all about, um, it was, I don't know what it was about. I can't remember the poem now. It was probably about a cat. I don't know. <laughs> a true lesbian. Go ahead. <laughs> there you go. So then I switched on Facebook Live and I said, I've just written this poem. Um, I was wearing some scrappy old white, you know, T-shirt and stuff. And, and people came on. And I think the biggest theme is just uh, authenticity and how we're all just beautiful human beings. We're divine beings having a human experience. And why don't we just see if we can help each other? Hmm. That's it, really. <clears throat> Seriously? I'd like to say something more profound, but there's nothing really. I mean, I'm well, I, 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 I just think your aura is profound. I just think you could just sit in that square and not say anything. I think we just feel it. Well, I'm just sitting there having coffee. I just <laughs> <laughs> so Cheryl. <clears throat> So you, did you know, Fiona, that Cheryl is a medium, a psychic medium? Very excited. Yeah. Are you getting anything? Thank you. Well, <laughs> you know, you were scribbling. We were all scribbling here as you were talking about Tyler Henry. And I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. Because what it does is it moves that conscious right out of the way. It just, it keeps you, uh, it moves the distractive mind out of the way to let the inspiration coming in. But um, I don't know. I felt a book with you. I felt you were writing a book or putting a book together or I'm getting ready to publish a book or I've written. I'm getting ready to publish. Oh, excellent. Excellent. So fantastic. Because I just felt success around it. You know, there might be more than one, but I know one is a big job. So, you know, don't want to put the cart before the horse, so to speak, but it feels like there might be another one after that, you know, after you have a Thank you. Yeah. Have much. you thought of that? Yeah. Oh, I have thought of that. Yeah. Keep Thank talking. You. Keep talking. Yeah. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. We should talk it more. Keep about writing. It. We should yeah, yeah. keep writing. Keep writing. Thank you. Keep scribbling. Thank you. Appreciate it. it. Works. It works for you. Thanks. But I mean, I think it's really important for. I mean, I always say, you know, I always say my mantra is like love, happiness, hope, gratitude, peace, authenticity. Mm -hmm. um, you know. It's, 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 they're very simple, you know, it's very simple to sort of, you know, follow just what basic rules, not even rules, what basic emotions and feelings are, you know, and I know we tend to all get caught up sometimes in the rat race and all the bullshit where we sort of complicate our lives. And I think, you know, with Fiona, I think a lot of people that you, that you have helped, um, you know, we all sit here and we come with baggage. You know, and, and technically, I mean, the, the healthiest way, which I don't do either, is, you know, do you have baggage, have a little bit of baggage, have an issue, deal with it. But it's so hard to deal with stuff along the way that we just keep piling and piling and piling stuff into our trunk until we get to a point. And it doesn't necessarily mean an age, just a consciousness where we're like, damn it, I can't do this anymore. I can't take this anymore. And I think the biggest fear with people the biggest fear is vulnerability and taking down, as you say, that mask to sort of deal with our own inside and go through with sort of our suppressions and our repressions. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, taking a step and it seems like your workshops seem to help people sort of peel away that veil to start to make that first step to deal with things because, you know, we don't think we're all infallible. We all make mistakes, but there's also pride. There's embarrassment, there's shame. 
but it's 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 like you create a forum for women to sort of sit there and men and whoever else listens um mm -hmm. put their stuff out there and it's a very safe environment so they can work through things instead of feeling that they have to be someone different to be judged mm -hmm. i couldn't agree more and i think that uh as a, a minority group, as lesbians, um, as someone who stayed in the closet pretty much till I was 48, uh, the, the, one of the biggest things that our community carries is, is so much shame. And, and so what's been one, I, mean, I didn't do the workshop for, particularly for lesbians, although obviously calling it lesbian lunch didn't hmm. help or did help. Is it so, giveaway? Come on. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> But that's what's happened is that is that, you know, that lesbians want a forum where they can have, you know, uh, I was going to say intelligent, but that would just be over the top, really. Um, mm -hmm. They don't say anything that clever. But um, there's a there's, you know, there's just it's just a very I, I've just found it very moving. Just, you know, that I I think that uh, you asked me what I wanted to be when I was younger. I really I wanted to be Catherine Coleman. Do you know who Catherine Coleman is? I don't. She was, a, she was an, 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 an evangelist um, who used to like fill big football stadiums and she had so much power that she could point at people and they'd all fall down, right? Big right. whole sections of the stadium. So right. obviously I've got a little bit of grandiosity and some narcissism and so <laughs> on going on. But- um, We're the clubs. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I think that the, the, the fact that I shunned lesbianism for as long as I did, and now I get to be this with just a kind of a, just someone who's sort of a, not a receptacle, but, uh, you know, someone who is now, I just feel very honored that lesbians want to be in this group. And um, you don't have to sign anything. And, um, and it's- Does it have to have sex with you? Is that the deal? Well, no, that, obviously they do have to do that. Oh, I figured, I figured. <laughs> it's got to be some perks, right? Um, so It's uh, over Zoom, though, so it's, you know. Oh, yeah, you can still Oh, get it's like Zoom sex. I mean, there's Skype sex, Zoom sex, phone sex. You know, there is, I mean, it, yeah. it, possibilities are endless now with the internet. That's too funny. Exactly. I mean, you've done, you've done Between the Sheets shows about this kind of thing, haven't you, Gay Gayanne? Yes, I have. Between the Sheets is kind of my life yeah <laughs> but, it's kind of, but it's kind of like i mean i like i like just like you i started the show um for an outlet you know for an outlet to sort of just speak my mind and be comfortable in a safe space that i've created and putting it out there and and really just putting out energy and attracting guests like yourself and and co-hosts like cara and jenny and 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 cheryl and val and mara and others and it is a tribe, you know, I mean, it's not like this is like a, it's not like Scientology between the sheets is not Scientology. Although I did think maybe we should do a church. I, it's, we could do a 5013C, I have no problem with that. But I mean, it's sort of like a forum for women and everyone's like, oh, it's just a woman's show. And it's not, and just like you, I mean, we have a large population of men that watch straight, gay, um, lesbians, non-lesbians, but I think it's about you know, kind of the open forum that we all have, Jenny with her shows, Val, and Val does it through her writing, Cheryl through her mediumship, Mar Cara through, you know, her even touching people and her, her work and, and Mara through her art. Um, you know, it's a creative forum and it's a safe space. And yeah, we're a little nutty, but you know, one thing I pride myself on on this show, and I think you do as well, is it's real. It's real, we're real people we're real women we don't always agree we don't always you know sometimes we all disagree but you know we can have a conversation and show people that you know we exist and our thoughts are just as important so you know yeah I could have made this show you know with a couple of guys and some girls but it was really important to me to make it female centric um, and it's not even about a lesbian show because I was, it's not a lesbian show. It's a woman show with it. And we just, some of us happen to be lesbians because otherwise, as you know, you know, les we always get pigeonholed. I mean, Jenny, as a comedian for you two, both of you, both Fiona and Jenny, as a comedian, you know, 
are you guys like known as stand-up comedians or are you guys oh the lesbian comedians and does that prevent both of you from getting work outside of the lgbt community because you're lesbian i'm just curious i have, I have no idea you go jenny um, well, I remember I didn't, I came out late in life too. So the first 10 years of my career, when I thought I was a straight girl, I was in the straight clubs. And so then once I came out in life, I started doing more of the, of the gay circuit, if you will, and doing more of those shows. So when I do every once in a while, I'll go back into the regular clubs. It's kind of like, Oh God, I got to sit through all the, all the homophobic stuff and all that stuff. So I kind of really appreciate where I am now and I haven't really tried to get into those clubs but I will tell you when I started as is just as a female comedian I would call the club up if I was trying to route my my gigs you know like, oh I got a gig here and a gig there the city in between would be great so I'd call them up and go hey you know I'm gonna be there this weekend could I do this do a set and they'd be like oh we already have a girl on the bill that that week it was like so for me I got as far as comedy goes it was more being a female comedian than than that and then I sort of just put myself into the lesbian community so it kind of didn't matter then wow fiona how about your experience when i started doing comedy i um i didn't i was i didn't mention lesbianism <laughs> even though that coming out had made me realize that i wanted to, to perform uh, but i still had this kind of it was degrees of outness and uh and i decided decided i didn't want to mention being gay so I did that for a while. And then I wrote a show called A Very British Lesbian. Having that in the title, uh, obviously, again. It was a giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> not, not subtle. Yeah. Not. So I basically define myself now. And and I I mean, I've, I've been really, I mean, I started, I, I didn't do my first set, I don't think, till I was about 55. Oh, really? So, yeah. You were a late bloomer on a lot of things. Yeah, so I'm a baby, really. I'm not like mm -hmm. a hardened, you know, like Jenny McNulty. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> she, a hardened, hardened. Girl, Jenny. What, what are you hardened? <laughs> she's, a, she's a tough, you know, she's been out there and done no. it. It's the last time I don't do this, don't do my hair before I do this show. My God. <laughs> you know, literally, Jenny, if no one knows this, and some of you do, Jenny is a hardcore, like, sports person so when she was getting ready for the show and like you know you saw the green screen and stuff in the back and she comes and she's got her cap on and her hair was wet i'm like it's like i thought like she literally was pulling away from some baseball i don't even know what sports happened oh, i went for a bike ride and i i needed, oh. <laughs> I needed it for my head Dan. i love that look <laughs> Oh, hold on. We have another. We have two more callers. One after the other. You ready for them? It's Laura again. Ghosting. Yeah, Laura, again. Laura, Laura, and the second one is Linda. So let's get Laura. Hello, one. Laura. Laura. Hi. Hello. Uh, hello, Gay Ann. Uh, long time Hi. listener, first time caller. <laughs> Always wanted to say that. <laughs> but I, I have to tell you, when I found Fiona, I was I was at my wits' end with the isolation. And all, and, you know, and all the animosity that was going on in this country. Uh, and I, I had been an isolator for a long time. And I thought I could handle the isolation. But then it just kind of, it, it steamrolled me over. And uh, uh, I guess when I, when I found Fiona, things started to turn around, you know. Uh, I had a couple of friends who kept posting these things about this British lesbian and they were so happy about it. I thought they'd joined a, joined a cult and drank the Kool-Aid or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, from the first time I tuned in, I, I felt like I had found the place where I belong with this tribe and with this group of women. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not, a, I don't think it's about being a lesbian. I, I think it's about the, uh, women being in a safe place it's a safe place whether you're straight gay bi or whatever you know no one's going to judge you for that and er everybody is so accepting and so nurturing and so encouraging that you can't help but kind of work on yourself you know and come out of your isolation and start including other human beings in your life well, thank you. So, and uh, I, I'm going to continue as long as it continues. I'll be there. 
Thank you, Laura. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you, Fiona. Thank you, Fiona. Calling in. Appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. I think we have Lisa next on the line. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. Lisa. Lisa, you're there. Hi. Uh, are you? Are you? Am I coming through? Yes, yes. you are. This is Gayanne, and welcome to Between the Sheets. Oh, hi. My name isn't Lisa. It's actually DK Linda. Oh, DK Linda. I remember you. Yeah, how are you? Good, how are, how are you, you? Welcome to the show. I mean, welcome to the show. Thanks. Welcome to, welcome. We, we, were we, we, were, we were neighbors for a minute. For a minute. Boca. For a minute, yeah, when I had my aunt's house for a year and then I sold it because I didn't, who, I mean, I didn't want to go live in Boca. I don't even want to go back to Boca. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I was actually calling to mention how excited I am about Fiona's book eventually coming out, mm -hmm. but I'm glad you all discussed that already. Um, I wanted to say, I loved what Laura just said. Um, I wanted to also mention how uh, Fiona has been a literal bright light in what was a bit of a dark time in the initial days of COVID. Um, I, I, I personally believe that she put out her intention and manifested all of us who found her and needed her. And uh, I'm just so happy for her success and I'm happy for everyone in the workshops. Uh, I, I'm just so thrilled and it's so positive and it's so wonderful. Um, thank you, Fiona, for everything. My question actually is for everybody though on the panel. How, how are you guys coping during COVID? How has it changed your lives and your your profession, your careers? How's everybody doing? All right, I'll take it really quick. A lot. Uh, my, uh, my job, um, <laughs> I'm back. I'm back to being on set. Um, I'm happy. I dyed my hair red, so I'm becoming a I'm becoming, <laughs> I'm becoming a whole different woman. Um, I just you know what, what, one thing that has kept me through this is I've kept being social. Uh, I've reached out to people. I've been on Facebook. Um, I am a social person. So I have always, I've, I've kept that up because if I didn't, I don't do well alone. There's my head is, um, there's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a really interesting place to be. So for me, <laughs> distracted, um, I have to keep social and, you know, and I did and I have. So, and now that my job is back, I'm like a hundred percent back. So I've never really felt the COVID, I don't even COVID depression or COVID whatever, because I just, purposely needed to push to be social. Jenny, your turn. Um, I started doing my uh, talk show. I started doing that uh, five days a week. I was doing it at one o'clock. I finally in September back down to Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And for me, um, in initially it's career that's done now for two years. There's no way, I don't think comedy clubs are gonna open up in the same way at least. So. For me, that was, you know, a, a given mentally from March and when I started doing the show and then it was about three weeks ago, I emotionally caught up to that and it was the weirdest thing. My cousin worked in Broadway and she was a kid wrangler for plays. So uh, that's what she did. Like when the, there's plays that have a lot of children in them, she made sure that they all got their schooling done and took care of them. And she was just posted this really long thing about how she really missed going to work and missed being backstage and the excitement and hearing the songs, even though she's heard them a hundred times. And that, I know I read that post and then I was watching some show and it was some weird crossing shot. It was just people walking, but it was, shit, we're not, they weren't masked. They were just people hanging out. And it was, it was like, it took six months for me to emotionally catch up with what's going on and it's I've been like depressed as shit for like the last three weeks it's been that's why I had to take my bike ride I'm sorry I was sorry yes. but um <laughs> it's just it's just been for me very strange because I just kind of just put everything into that show and and just kind of pumped out with like crazy crazy like shows so that's what I did was just work and then when I did back off it it all hit me so should have kept working <laughs> Tara well, um, for me, I, I got divorced in February and that, that was all very sudden and quite shocking. So I was going through a, a time when I was going inside anyway and spending a lot of time alone. Um, so I actually, in a way, I, I made the most of it. I used, I, I got more discipline when it came to exercise. Um, I finished my big 
mosaic that I have that I that is all done on the wall there. It's four foot by six. I, I just I threw myself into a lot of things. And plus I'm a voice artist and bizarrely I, I seem to have actually a little bit more work than I used to have. I don't really know why that is, which isn't loads, but I mean, um, no, you know, I kind of take it in my stride and I, I walk and I, I laugh and I enjoy the sunshine and the trees. And then sometimes I just have to wail because, you know, like Jenny, there it, we're in deep shock. We, we, we're just getting through this thing, but we're in deep shock. Everybody is, I think. Mara? Okay. Mara? Oh, okay. I couldn't hear you. Um, for me, it hit me right away, the depression, right away. I started overeating to cope. My gym, the gym was closed. I didn't have any equipment really in my house. So, um, I was stuffing my emotions, put on like 10 pounds. Um, and then in on July, I decided that I couldn't keep living like this. So I got a stationary bike and then I have been just completely, um, working out and eating right again, and I feel much better. Um, but every day I get a little bit depressed, but then like Jenny, I get on my bike and that's just saves me. A good workout is always like a savior for me. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it really, it's, it's just, it's, it's uh, clarity when you're, you know, you're sweating so much and you're, you're getting those endorphins going. So yeah. Is, is your art changed Mara? Um, yeah, I think, well, I've been getting more, um, more requests to do certain things that, uh, from clients that aren't really my cup of tea. Um, my cup of tea is really drawing portraits of, of people. And I've been getting a couple requests that are different. Like one was very sci-fi to do this big sci-fi painting. And I'm, I'm doing another one of all dogs. It's just Tons of bold French bulldogs, which is oh, really challenging. Fun. I want. I want to see all of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. it'd be yeah. interesting to see how your style has changed or adapted to COVID. Cheryl, what have uh, you? How have you been coping? Well, actually, fortunately, uh, it's kind of similar, kind of the same, guys, because I was already doing my mediumship readings on Zoom uh, and by the phone. You know. The only thing that changed for me was I couldn't go out and do my public demonstrations anymore. So that that affected me just a little bit. But then I got more work on Zoom or phone call readings. So it's actually been pretty beneficial. And I got to tell you, the connections I've made with my close friends, we've even gotten closer. You know, I mean, really just sharing I, maybe the same for you guys, just really deeper conversations, more heart to heart, more calls even so it's been it's been a good thing really just bringing me and my family and friends closer i agree yeah just having the time and val oh y'all might not want to hear mine because i'm really very honest um <laughs> alcohol <laughs> uh, some of us know how to do that but <laughs> anyway um so it's all good you know, I have that shirt that's all over the internet that says day drinking because 2020 sucks. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> that I've gained 20 pounds. Now I'm doing everything that y'all are doing and working out and trying to eat right. And I'm not going to stop drinking, but <laughs> it does keep me sane. That's <laughs> Val, I expect you to continue to keep drinking because it gives me an excuse when we see each other to drink. <laughs> I've been hanging with Tanya, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course you have. Do me, baby, do me. Um, and Fiona, obviously, I think the answer to the question is that's been echoed, you know, throughout all the people that have called is this is how you found your outlet. Yeah, yeah, I did. And really, I mean, I've been I've, I've been ready for COVID since I was 15. I just, you know, indoors, <laughs> no friends and just, you know, eating food. So I'm good. But I'm kind of worried about when it opens up, you know, I think we're we'll <laughs> rushing out. <laughs> and we're gonna well, the, the thing is, you know what, believe it or not, I mean, I think I think like we'll be more honest i think we'll be more balanced as weird as that sounds i think we'll actually we'll all be pro probably much more grounded when this i mean 
I hope to be 10 more pounds thinner. Um, cause then well, see you then Diane, you'll shrink away. No, I'm not. You know, everyone keeps saying I'm skinny. Like, no, no. The skinny is never, will never be a word used for me. If I stand up, I am not, I'm skinny from the waist up, but eventually this will sort of whatever people like you, forget it. Anyway, who gives a shit? I'm a size six and I have never been a size six in my life. So I am excited. <laughs> <laughs> so there. Um, started this between the sheets, this, this between the sheets three, you've lost 35 pounds. Is yeah, I have. That's yeah. amazing. I have. Amazing. I have. But you know what? But it, it, but it is because, um, you know, again, COVID made me think, because everyone's like, how would you go on a diet? I didn't diet. I hate the word diet. I hate it because the minute I hear diet, it's a negative, and then I don't want to follow it. So I've just, I decided, you know, I, I met someone, um, she was a vegetarian and she helped, you know, she was sort of plugging on me and trying to show me what more healthy eating is. Um, I, I tried to go vegan. I just can't go vegan because it's a lot. I'd rather do vegetarian um, because it's easier just because vegan, it's the whole bunch of stuff you can't really eat. And then yeah, fake stuff and, and it doesn't taste good. But, but what happened was for me, cause I know Jenny is a vegan and I'm not, it's, it's, you know, I just, I'd rather be a vegetarian than a vegan right now. Who knows what a year from now will be. But what I realized is, you know, um, you know, I, I cook better. I cook at home. I just am more conscious. And it's like, it's not a diet. I tell people it's more of a healthy lifestyle, a healthy way to do what I do. I mean, I bought an electric bike. I hike, you know, I eat better. I I have I've completely cut sugar out of my diet. I've completely cut sodium as much as I can, unless it's found in some foods out of my diet. But wow. the other thing is, you know, when I want something, I don't deprive myself of it. If I want McDonald's French fries, as gross as it sounds, but sometimes I will go through a drive and I'll get the tiny little one and I'll have two or three and it satisfies that that memory, that memory imprint of what it tastes like, and then I'm done. So, I mean, if anything, you know, yes, there was the COVID, whatever, 15 or whatever, but I think now that we're kind of gone, I think people like Mari, you and others, you know, we're kind of like, okay, all right, let's now get back. I mean, I'm out of the shock. Let's get back into a program and a focus program. And I think what COVID has done is maybe brought people back to center maybe a little focused and the people that sort of, you know, aren't as right brain, left brain balance um, as some, you know, they found, you know, they found Mara, I mean, Mara's art, Val, your, 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 your you know, what you do in the entertainment, Jenny, your comedy, Fiona, your poetry, me, my face, my podcast, Cheryl, your mediumship. So I think every single person on this earth has a gift and has a value to impart on people. We're just really fortunate that we have a forum to have people tap into. So I go out to all of you people, everyone matters. You guys matter, every single one of you. It doesn't matter if you have a podcast or a stage or whatever, you matter. So even if it's talking to a neighbor, <clears throat> everyone has value. So never devalue yourself, never because it's all about love. And if you come from that point of love and appreciation and gratitude, <clears throat> then you only will be that sparkly sunshine. And then the people who you're a sparkly sunshine to, you'll be their rainbow unicorn. It's <laughs> all about, it's all about symbiosis. It's about crossing. It's about cross pollinating. So um, next time you feel lonely, listen to Fiona. Next time you feel lonely, listen to Jenny. Next time you feel lonely, listen to Between the Sheets. Next time you're lonely, call Cheryl and get a reading. Valerie, read Hollywood Times. Cara, look at her Facebook page. She has some beautiful. And Mara, ask Mara to, you know, maybe commission something for you in an art. You know, it's all about sharing now. And it's not about being selfish. And it really is community. And we are truly all in this together. Truly we are. So let's stick together, everybody. And on that note, our time has come to say good night. Um, Fiona, yeah. I just want to thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Have you cut out alcohol? 
have I cut out alcohol? You know what? I was never really a drinker to begin with. Um, I mean, I, um, smoking is a whole other story, but, um, but <clears throat> I'm, I'm conquering that. I'm trying. Um, that's the hardest, not pot like cigarettes. I'm trying. I stop, I stop for months and then I start again. Um, I guess that's my safety net. I don't know why. I mean, maybe, I don't know. Um, but alcohol has never been my choice. Um, I'll drink it, you know, I'll have a glass of wine, but I am a lightweight. So, you know, like a glass and a half and either I'm laughing hysterically and then two seconds later, give me a bed because I want to go to sleep. So, um, but I, I, but it's okay. But we all, and that's another thing, you know, everybody pick your poison. You know, we're not perfect, you know, and don't, don't get on yourself for picking whatever that poison is. If it gets you through the day, fine. Um, you know, and again, I don't advocate excess of anything, but I think, you know, we all, we all have to just find something, you know, and if it's smoking cigarettes, smoking pot, um, drinking alcohol, exercising, I mean, it's positive and negative. So, you know, just, just be careful and cautious with whatever you do. Excess is where the issue is. Excess of anything is where the issue is. So if we just stay grounded and balanced, I think we could do everything if we want. I mean, like I wouldn't do ayahuasca every week, you know, but for the experience that I had, it was the worst experience that I ever had. But on the flip side, I tell everyone, it was the most life-changing, profound experience that I could ever have. So again, something that I look at is, oh, I'll never fucking do that again. For the time that I did it, it really, it really broke my core to get to a place where I needed to come to, to sort of evolve on my journey. And that was my choice, but there are other choices out there. So, you know, enough of my soapbox. I'm always on the fucking soapbox. But anyway, so Fiona. Yay. You have beautiful blue eyes. Beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but again, just in case anybody missed it. Just bring because I just want to say thank you. Thank you for joining us on the show. It was long overdue. Thank you for what you do in the community. Thank you for what you do outside of the community, lives that you've touched, um, your brilliance, your compassion, your kindness, your, your, your gratitude and giving back. Um, it's selfless. Um, so, so thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you for what you do. Thank you, Gan. And, and, and thank you. Yeah. And where can people find you? Let's let's get your plug in now. Okay, so uh, my website is fionagoodwin.com. Uh, uh, on Facebook, if you want to join the uh, Facebook page, uh, sorry, the Monday and Fridays, uh, just go to a very British lesbian Facebook page and just like it. And then you will, if you go on there, it's at one o'clock uh, on a Monday and a Friday. And... Um, <clears throat> And uh, the workshops, you can find out, the work, out about the workshops from the, from the, uh, from the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Really, I do appreciate it. Jenny McNulty. I am doing my shows also at one o'clock, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and on my Facebook page. So the name you see right there, Jenny McNulty, add fan to that. So go to Facebook, Jenny McNulty fan at one o'clock. And then I've got Pandemic Password, which Gay Ann is going to be on this Monday at four o'clock also on my page, which is just a fun, silly, uh, crazy game show. So thank you. Thank you, Jenny. You're so cute with the little baseball cap. Your girlfriend's so lucky. Uh <laughs> I try to tell them that often. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Val Milano, thank you for joining us today. What tell us about the Hollywood Times where people can find you? Tell us, tell us. We we have everything entertainment, uh, sports, uh, television, radio, podcasts. We do reviews, and so it's called the Hollywood Times, the Hollywood Times dot today. So follow us, like us, comment, come write, come listen, come watch. Let's let's do this together this family that we have. And thank you, thank you, thank you for the release that you guys wrote today to promote tonight's show and to promote, um, and just promote us. So thank you, Valerie, thank you. Another one who's selfless in the community. Thank you, thank you. Um, Cara Noble. Yes, hi, I, I, I just wanna say to Fiona, um, you know, we must be missing pantomime this year, right? No panto to go and visit. 
but we have the election coming up. Yeah. So that's going to make up for it. Because I think every week it's going to get crazier and crazier. Just think about the three crazy things that happened this week and we're not even in, in November yet. <laughs> what a country. Both yeah, our everybody, I, you know, everybody vote. I mean, seriously, go vote. I mean, I, of course, you're going to hear me say vote blue because that's who I am. But in any event, I think it's our right to vote. However you vote, just don't throw away the vote. Bernie's not running. Don't write his name in. No, I mean, it just either vote for fucking Trump or fucking Biden. OK, don't write anybody else's name. They lost. We're in California. Okay? It doesn't make a difference. But well, I know, but I'm just talking to people out there. This is not a California show. Have your voice out there. Um, and really, don't write anybody's name in. It's bullshit. It's either Bernie, and that's our Bernie. Sorry, God. No, I'm glad he's gone. It's either <laughs> Biden or Trump. Pick, pick. It Biden. does matter, though, because we got to get a total number of, it's got to be a blowout. Otherwise, they're going to say it wasn't, it was this. And Eric, Eric Trump even said, if they if it were a total blowout, we'd accept it. So, hey, challenge accepted. Let's challenge do it. Challenge accepted. Uh, Something just came through on news alert about Kelly Conway about um, COVID, but I couldn't read because I was trying to pay attention. So I don't know what's going on with her. Um, Mara Shane. You just what it meant. <laughs> huh? What? You just um, learned what it meant. Yeah, right. Mara. Yes. Uh, thank you for this <laughs> opportunity. I, I love being on your show, Gayan. And I, um, you can find me in various places. One is marashaneart.com. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Mara Shane, and also on Facebook, Mara Shane Custom Designs. Well, and obviously, I, because you're diverting into dogs and cats and an industrial, well, so now it's I a whole to, bunch of designs. Yeah, yes. I have to expand what I'm able to do. I can't be like a one trick pony. Huh. Well, you're not a trick. No, no one, no, Mara will never be anybody's trick. <laughs> Because I'm her That's big true. sister, that'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> but no, really, thank you. Um, thank you, Fiona. And I just love this group of people. You guys are my people. Thanks so much. So we all have our own tribe. And eventually, all the tribes, everybody has tribes. They all, the, what, the tribes of like minds will intersect. So now the Fionians know the between the Sheetsians mm -hmm. and vice versa. And then we've got more Ians coming up. And then we're all the, 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 the McNultyans, um, <laughs> the Milanoans, the Noblians, the Murphyans. I mean, it's, um, you know, we all find our, you know, look, we all are burning the same light. And everybody who's burning the same light, we ultimately all find each other, which goes right into spirituality. And there we go, Cheryl Murphy. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Uh, you can reach me on my website, which is mediumcheryl.com. I have some great events coming up online, October 17th and then November 7th. And then also my Facebook page is at Medium Cheryl. So great to be here. Uh, I want to ditto what Mara said. So it's a great to be with this tribe. Thank you. Everyone out there, thank you so much for joining us. We're on the first and third Friday of every month at 7 p.m. Pacific here on the United Bro yeah, United Broadcasting Network or UBN Go. Um, fly, please follow us, uh, follow me on, on Instagram, QTE Brat, like the Facebook page, Between the Sheets podcast um, on Facebook. Um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you all for tuning in. The, even the Theonians. I mean, I'm glad we've met them all. And it's uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful try. I can't wait to see your flag. Um, <laughs> but, and your pins. I mean, Fiona for president. I think that's coming soon. Um, but I just thank you, everyone out there listening. If this is your first time watching Between the Sheets, I hope you'd enjoyed it. And I hope you share and listen and pass it along and continue. Um, the third I can't believe it's October already. The third uh, Friday in October. I don't have any guests yet, so um, I'm trying to find somebody good, somebody fun. Um, thank you all for tuning into the Sharon Gless show two weeks ago. Um, she just sends her love. I was talking to her the other day. She must have called me five times to say thank you. I mean, seriously, like who, who the hell does that? Um, but you know, as I always said, you know, it's all about love, love, love in the world. It's always about compassion, kindness, support, gratitude, peace. Um, I always like to say hugs and I always give you guys a virtual hug because we can't hug for reals anymore. But 
I know you can. I know, Car. I'll probably hug you on Sunday. Um, yes, I will. So, um, but, you know, put your best foot forward. Um, it doesn't matter what other people think. As long as you have this in your heart um, and it emanates out, then you will attract the right people just like we've attracted each other. So always be who you are. Don't change. Don't let anyone try and change you. It's don't fit the square in the peg. Find other pegs or other squares. And on that note, everybody, be safe, be well, follow the rules, whatever your rules are. And as always, thank you. Thank you, Tony, for running the boards tonight. And thank as you. always, namaste. namaste. Have a great night. Cue the song, Tony. Bye, everybody. Thank you. See you in two weeks. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.